Hey there, I'm Mark Hell. I'm so glad you're here with us. Did you listen to any good music yet today? It's fun to press play when you've got your favorite playlist queued up. I think all of us have music that fires us up and makes us feel strong, brave, and confident. And you know what? Confidence is important in life. That's why we're taking the whole week to find out what true confidence is all about. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. Spoiler alert, God thinks you're amazing. After all, he knows you. He made you exactly the way you are. And he has the very best plan for your life. Let's start things off today with another fun game, shall we? We all have our favorite songs, and I was thinking, Maybe we could write a hit song together. I mean, how hard could it be? Let's do it. Let's play Top of the Charts. If you've ever done a Mad Lib or a funny fill-in, this game is the same idea. We'll start off by writing the lyrics to our awesome hit song, and that's where I need your help. First, go find a piece of paper and write down the numbers one through 10 like this. You can pause the video while you go grab your paper and write the numbers. Cool? Cool. Pause. All right, I'll call out a type of word and you write down any word you want on your piece of paper. Make sure you write it next to the correct number. Oh, and if there's anyone watching this with you, they can help you come up with your words. If you need more time to think, just hit pause. Let's get started. Number one, a place, one syllable. Number two, a type of food, one syllable. Number three, another type of food, one syllable. Number four, adjective, a word that describes something. Number five, adjective that rhymes with scream. Number six, a type of food, three syllables. Number seven, a type of food, one syllable. Number eight, name of a song. Number nine, adjective, a word that describes something. Number 10, noun, a person, place, or thing. Okay, that's it. I think this will be a hit. I can't wait to put it together with the music. When you see the number, shout out whatever you have written down. Let's perform our masterpiece, Markel's Diner. There's a place down the where you know I love to go, cause the and the set my heart aglow. No matter what I order on the Screen, I know I'm going to love it. It'll make me feel for breakfast juicy in the afternoon, telling jokes with my friends as we listen to some tunes. The band in the corner plays soft and low. I like to sing along like an old crow. <laughs> Hanging out at the diner where every wants to be. It's a place you're always welcome, even if you sing off key. <laughs> Amazing. I knew we could write a hit. I'm sure that will be on the top of the charts in no time. Now that we've got our vocal cords warmed up, let's sing and worship God together. Get up on your feet.
that you will complete it You will see Hello? What? Are you... are you sure? Today? Uh, of course, is everything all right? We have to switch gears like that? You don't mean... You do mean... Well, if that's the only way, then... I suppose... I suppose... One second. Why are you doing this? I thought your phone call could use some underscoring. It sounded important. It's a bicycle repair shop. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll try and pick it up today. Thanks. I'll, I'll see you then. My name is Brandon. And I'm John. And this is the So-and-So Show. And I got a synthesizer. Why, though? Oh, come on. Brandon, th this is the big time. We have to bring some snap and pizzazz back into the show. And all the other shows, they have their own synthesizer. I just want to get in on what it. What other shows are you talking about? All of them. All of them. <laughs> Do you really want to be the only show that doesn't have dramatic underscoring? I guess I've never thought about it. Well, think about it right now. Well, okay, I've thought about it. I still don't understand. Listen to me. I, if we don't up our production value on the show right now, we're just going to be ordinary. Say it isn't so. Come on, I mean it. Okay. This is, can, can you just imagine a show without music? It's, okay, you know what? Tell me a joke. Tell, Tell me a joke. joke. Yeah. Something funny. Be okay, funny. Okay, no, be no, funny, I, I, got, I got one. Okay. I got one. <laughs> what did one plate say to the other plate? What? Dinner's on me. <laughs> you get... All right, stop that. Okay, fine, thank you. Fine, but let's try another joke. This time with underscoring. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. <laughs> okay. What's brown, hairy, and wear sunglasses? <laughs> what, Brandon? A coconut on vacation. Oh. 
Oh, 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 yeah. Ooh, yeah, 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 isn't this better? <laughs> yeah. All right, fine. Oh. You can underscore the show. Yes. I just hope that this doesn't have some unforeseen consequences. On this show? Surely not. <laughs> so today... Today... We're gonna be... We're gonna be talking to, to Kellen. Which is normal. And he's gonna... He's gonna tell us! John! Oh, sorry, I can't hear you through this. What were you saying? I don't recall what I was trying to say because I was interrupted. Uh. But it's fine. I just have to keep talking with intensity. If I do that, no one will notice that what I'm saying doesn't make any sense. Bananas! Telephone! Houseplant! Laptop! Framed picture! I pet a kitty cat's tummy and I feel great! What are you doing? I, I'm sorry, <laughs> it was just you were getting so funny, you were getting so into it. Ah! Oh! I think I'm okay with being ordinary. Copy that. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys. Hey Kellen, uh, what are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about when Jesus picked his first disciples. Here's a little laundry theater. <laughs> Jesus was standing by the Sea of Galilee, preaching to a crowd who came to hear the Word of God. When he was done teaching, Jesus got into a boat that belonged to a fisherman named Simon, who is also called Peter. Jesus said, put out into deep waters, let down the nets so you can catch some fish. Peter replied, Jesus, We've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. So they sailed out into deeper water and cast their fishing nets overboard. When they did what Jesus asked, their nets were filled to bursting. Some of their nets even began to break and their boat began to sink. Immediately, Peter fell to his knees in front of Jesus, and he said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Don't be afraid, Jesus said. From now on, you will fish for people. Peter and his friends, James and John, left their boats and nets behind and became Jesus' disciples. Later, Jesus happened upon a tax collector named Levi. Jesus told Levi to follow him, and with no hesitation, Levi followed. Later that night, Levi held a feast for Jesus. A large group of tax collectors were eating along with him. Now, when Jesus was alive here on earth, being a tax collector was bad. He was the kind of person you wouldn't expect Jesus to hang out with. In fact, the teachers of the law complained, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them simply, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to turn away from their sins. The end.
I love that story, Kellen. Yeah, Jesus didn't exactly go for the obvious choices when he picked the disciples, did he? Yep. Jesus could have picked the smartest people or the most important ones or the ones who read the Bible from cover to cover to be his disciples. But he didn't. He chose people that might have seemed ordinary to everyone else. Fishermen and tax collectors and sinners. People like us, by the way. But why did he do that? I think it was so that everyone would know Jesus cared about people. Rich and poor, good and bad, famous and ordinary. He wanted everyone to feel like they could belong, even sinners like you and me. That is awesome. I, I love feeling like I belong. Me too. Thanks, Kellen. You bet. Okay, we'll see you soon in the future. Okay, uh, bye. Have you enjoyed the show today, John? Are you kidding me? I have rhythm, I got music. Because of Jesus, I feel like I belong. Who could ask for anything more? Hey. Well, I can ask one thing more. Oh, 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 oh. let me. Reveal the question. <laughs> Where do you feel like you belong? Yeah, maybe you feel like you belong when you're at home or when you're at church. Or you could feel like you belong when you're doing something that you love, like playing a sport or dancing or hosting a show with your best friend. Oh, thanks, buddy. Are you ever going to stop doing that? Doubtful. Mm. This makes me feel like I'm in a shopping mall in the 80s. You want to play us out? You got it. Until next time, I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And this has been The So-and-So Show. Peace. Jesus really is the best friend you could ever have. You never have to wonder if you belong because you always belong to him. He's always there for you. He loves you so much that he gave his life on the cross for you. Here's what we need to remember today. I can have confidence because I belong. Hopefully there are lots of places you feel like you belong. At home, at church, at school, or on your sports team, in your theater group, or just hanging out with your best buddies. But for now, this is a really good question to think about. Where do you feel like you belong? I'm so thankful that even if I didn't feel like I belonged anywhere else, I will always belong to Jesus. Maybe later when you have some time to talk with your family or friends, you could ask someone who believes in Jesus about the time they decided to be friends with him. I bet it would be really interesting to hear how they chose to follow him with their whole life. Hey, thanks for hanging out today. I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.